What's going on, cassette culture? I buy a lot of cassettes off of Bandcamp. I have a lot of these indie releases that people make at home. I had this crazy idea that let's just go through them and see how they're put together, and maybe we can learn something about some of the different methods people use to make these sorts of uh, releases. All of these tapes were all put together in different ways, and I think by flipping through these, um, I've probably learned the most about DIY tape production uh, than I have doing anything else, just by you know buying people's tapes and seeing what they did. First, not much I can pick up from this in terms of learning things, but isn't this awesome? This is from Glow Mag. This is the Confessions of an 80s uh, low-budget horror film composer. He sold this double tape set at MAGFest, um, and I thought it was just the awesomest thing. And it, it came in an evidence bag. <laughs> not at all a DIY production. He had, uh, he had a company do this for sure. Let's start with these. So, once upon a time, I went to my friend Paul's house, and he had this huge operation. It was probably back in like 2002. Huge operation set up in his basement. There, there's tapes all over the place and boom boxes and equipment and everything. And what he was doing was he was working something called the Slow Fidelity Group where he was producing tapes. And he gave me that day this and all of these. So let's take a look at what he did. This one in particular, this was really the tape that opened my eyes into what could be done uh, with DIY tape production. So this was, a, um, I don't know where he ordered this tape, but just a clear, you know, simple white tape. And what he did was he had the, the, the sticker paper and he put it in a traditional typewriter and he typed out his label that way. And there you go. And if you look at his, his jacket, his J card, his is measured and bent or measured and folded whereas mine aren't, but this is just printed from a simple printer. And this is the Quiet Lions album, and you can get this on Bandcamp for free. I don't think he sells tapes anymore, because that was uh, a very long time ago, more than 10 years ago. And he also produced, let's see, I think this was also Slow Fidelity, not sure, but this was a split noise album that, that his younger brother did. Same kind of thing. We've got pink paper this time. And they went for the extra folds, which I appreciate. That's something I haven't done yet. Here's another Slow Fidelity release. This is another Noise album. We're looking at uh, Leo Svertsky and Cat Hernandez. And this is just, this is like, this feels like construction paper that has been folded. And he made a hundred of these. Woo! So I've since looked this album up, and again, you can download the you can download the zip file and listen to the music. But this album, I mean, you can't buy this tape anymore. So again, traditional uh, typewriter printing of the label. It's not clear to me if he was having trouble with his typewriter that day, or if he just wanted a shadow effect. <laughs> but there you go. And then here liner notes in the style of a flyer. So there were two more I got from Paul. This one is a bit of a weird one. This is the Sadville demo. And I don't think I've ever <laughs> listened to this, but it is the scraggliest DIY tape I think I've ever encountered. First of all, that's a mixtape. That's a mixtape, and that's written in pen. So there we go. And this looks more like these are the liner notes. This looks more like a flyer than it, <laughs> than it does a uh, um, liner notes. But there you go. And apparently 250 of these were made. Two, geez, Louise, 250 mixtapes were turned into the Sadville demo. And I don't even know, now that I got this out and it's just a quarter folded piece of paper, I don't know how it's supposed to go back in there. So. I'm going to figure out what to do. Oh, it's only half a case. Points for being the most DIY of all DIY tapes. Uh, I think there was more tapes from him, but I don't know where they went. This one is not a slow fidelity release. I think this might be just a release he had. This is from Unimpressed Tapes. Who, I haven't looked them up since then, but I've had this for a lot of years. So. Just a plain tape that was purchased and dubbed on, right? And the label's written in pen. But one thing I want to point out about this tape, 
I guess I just noticed the tabs are still in there so that you can record right over it. This is a heavy tape. Look at that window, how much tape is in there. I believe uh, that this is an extra long tape. So this one also has uh, the flyer style uh, liner notes. And now we get into the stuff that I bought off of Bandcamp. Uh, this is the Red Pants album uh, with two small EPs he has listed on here. So he did the post-it note. I've had a few people do this and I get a big kick out of it. So you can see I leave it there. Um, in terms of what's on the tape, so he went with the rubber stamp method. So he bought a rubber stamp and some uh, some ink that doesn't come off. So you can see this this isn't it's not coming off of my thumbs. And he stamped it, which looks pretty cool. It seems like an like, like an expensive way to go. Like I, I would only do that if I'm making like a lot of tapes, because um, you spend money on the rubber stamp and then you make however many copies of this you made, and then you're stuck with a rubber stamp. But that was a cool album. And he also shipped this with an art book. Uh, which is pretty sweet. And some buttons uh, and other stuff. And, and uh, I think the buttons was it. A lot of these came with stickers, but I have the stickers in a pile elsewhere. Um, and then we got the... Ah. This is Sad Speller, the Quirkage album. So you can see that the uh, spine isn't uh, lined up exactly with the title. Which is fine. It's no big deal. So this guy, on his tape, he just put nothing. <laughs> there is nothing there. Um, and <laughs> I found that it was okay because I used the number on top to actually determine what's the A and B side. You can see the numbers facing to me. This is how it goes in. That's A. And you can also see that uh, the tape's all the way to the left. I always rewind my tapes. Always. And he put a personalized note in there, which I thought was awesome. And he wrote, hey dude, thanks so much for picking up a tape. You're officially my only friend, my only East Coast friend that I'm aware of. Hope you enjoy the, the vibes and stay happy, sad speller. Which is awesome. So I saved that with this tape. So this guy collaborated on another project. Weather Talk. Alright. So on this one... Again, nothing. Nothing there. And there's no number on top either. So I've just kind of been able to tell based on listening to it and rewinding it. We had a bare bones J card. It's, it's literally just a printout with a painting. Something I learned from, uh, um, from these three releases. I think this one was fine, this one was fine, but this one in particular, um, you have to advance your tape for a few seconds before you start recording, because this guy made that mistake. He had, and I bought this off of Bandcamp, so I have a digital copy as well, so it's not that big of a deal, but he put, um, he tried to record on, if you can see this, the first couple seconds of tape that's clear, so what happens is when you hit play and you go back and listen to it, uh, the first couple seconds are cut off. And it's like, we joined this album already in progress. And again, this one came with, uh, and I think all three of these I got off of Bandcamp, so I have the, the digital copies. Not such a big deal. I do listen to these tapes, though. So that was that was something, uh, an important lesson that I learned that I use on my mixtapes. Right. This one is a bit of a weird one. This is... Uh, it says Swan City Sounds. That's a split. That's not a, na a name, an album name. Those are two different artists. Sleeping, uh, Sleeping Arms and Lombardi Skies. So they have electronic music that sounds an awful lot like the early days of uh, Starship Amazing, if you know who they are. So they have a really neat looking tape. It's blue. They've got uh, a paper stick label, which seems to work well. Sounds pretty good. Um, the J card has done very well. This is uh, some some thick card stock. It's double sided. Swan City Sounds. So that's a that, that that's a, a label. This one, all right. Th th this is an awesome tape. This band is awesome. They shipped a bunch of stickers with this album that I don't have here for you to see. They're they're over there. 
This came with like four stickers, which I certainly appreciate. But this is a perfect example of what not to do. All right. Let's, let's go. Uh, okay. This is a an, one that's done right. Okay. If you look at the album art the way you're supposed to, it opens like a book from right to left. And then if you put it on its side, it should read across normally or upright if you wish. That's fine as well. These guys, this is their artwork, the way it's supposed to be looked at. But it opens the other way, which drives me absolutely crazy. On top of that, this is backwards. So when I put this on my shelf, it's all kinds of backwards. And uh, that was another important lesson learned about creating tapes, is that has to be uniform. So here's their tape, and another weird thing about this tape is that the entire album is put on this side here. This is the whole album. Back side is blank. Now I know some people do that and that's a thing. It's not like these guys made that up. But I found that to be really weird. Like if you've only got 20 minutes of music and you're gonna put it on a single side of a tape, that's fine. But you should put it on both sides. I think. In my opinion. These guys only went with one side and I found that weird. I've actually considered sticking uh, stickers over the top, just digging up the uh, the Bandcamp album and dubbing the other side with the same thing myself just so that it's not blank Because I can't listen to one side and then flip it over you then have to go through uh, Rewinding also they included um, an unlock code for Bandcamp, which is pretty cool The thing that was weird was I bought this off of Bandcamp So I already had this on Bandcamp when I ordered it and they sent this code So I guess I can unlock it a second time or give it to a friend or something All right, uh, and then we come to, this is the only Vaporwave, straight Vaporwave album I have. This is from the Lost Angeles um, label that makes really good quality tapes. And at the time, this was the most I'd ever spent on a cassette tape. This, this cost me about $13.50 to get this imported from wherever. I can't remember where I got this from. Pink, translucent tape with a, a nice sticker, very well printed and designed. Um, it's good. This is not glossy, so this will fade over time. Years down the road I'll have issues with it, but you know what? That's okay. It doesn't bother me. It's a great tape. Um, I thought this was a Type 2 tape, but the brown ribbon is telling me otherwise. Their J card looks really nice. It's a uh, high gloss professional looking J card. That is a good album. Good looking album. It's a good looking album and you can attain this level of quality. Right? If you order the right tapes and you go to the printer, this is a this is an achievable level of quality, which is one of the reasons why I like this tape so much. Now we go to Modern Charms. This is available on Bandcamp and I want to talk about this for two reasons. I would not consider this a DIY tape, for one, but everything on this tape looks great. You've got a company printed, that, that's a company produced tape. That is not, you know, a, a DIY home dub. This is the same. They went with a printer, right? This looks great, it feels great, very professional. What I don't understand is why the quality of the dub is so low. This is one where some of these other DIY tapes have beat the pants off of this album in terms of the dub, or the quality of the dub. I, I don't understand. They really blew it on this one. And let's look, it's got producer's names. This is Tim Jennert produced this. Well, Tim, drop the ball, mate. This is the only release I have from Business Casual. Not much to say about this top quality this looks like something they may have done themselves um, they charge a lot for these tapes this was 13 bucks once it's shipped so I would have I, I kind of expected this to be like a company produced tape and it's not it's a DIY tape with albeit a very nicely printed label but that's a DIY tape it, they figured out dubbing the dub sounds great sounds an awful lot better than modern charms so that's all I need on that one and then high gloss label, high gloss J card, perfectly cut and arranged very nicely. So again, 
Not a, I, I don't know if you could call this a DIY tape because business casual is a label. So the artist has gone through a label to produce this. However, a very attainable level of quality. This is my final specimen. This is a mixtape from the, from the, the last mixtape uh, exchange. So not much to say about that. But these here I want to talk about because these, these are the weirdest of the bunch. This is Gur. This is the Slow Mutants. These are both from a company called Drug Party Records. And if you look at these, that's not a DIY tape. Somebody had, went to a company and got that done. Look, there's no screws, so it's pressure sealed, right, with a latch. So you'd have to get a screwdriver and pop it open by, by prying it open. Slow Mutants is the same way. Let's take a look. See that? 2016. So this one's it's got some got some years on it. The J cards look good. These albums are available for free on the internet if you just want to download. Right? Whatever the band drew, you've got a multi-fold J card like that. So here's the deal about these higher quality um, albums. If you want to make an album like this, every time you crank up the quality on any one of these things, be it hiring a company for the tape or getting the extended J card like this, it drives the price to produce each unit up. So the only way to do that is to A, make the tape more expensive for everyone else, which is what Los Angeles does, or create, uh, uh, manufacture a whole lot of tapes, which I don't think anyone does, uh, with maybe a few exceptions. But that's the reason these are, the, the, these are like, you know, 10, 12, 13 bucks for like a good tape like that. And I'm not just picking on those companies because a lot of companies do that. This is a machine or a company produced tape for $5. And both of these showed up in my, um, in my mail wrapped in saran wrap, uh, um, uh, uh, shrink wrap, unopened, brand new tapes. I don't know how they did that. So I have a feeling it will, first of all, it took like three months to get to my place. I don't know what happened, but my, my guess is that this was a business that was, that's folding and or folded in the past and they're, they're liquidating inventory, but these were worth way more than they charged. This is the quality I would expect of like a $13 tape off of Bandcamp. Five bucks a piece. They still sell them for that drug party records. Look them up, place the order and just prepare to wait for like a couple of months.